Every woman has a unique story, and as a journalist, I want to share with you some of the most inspiring ones. I'm Sarah Strackhouse, and this is The Strackhouse. Thanks so much for joining us. We really want to make sure anyone watching this feels like they are home. They can talk about anything here. So we are so excited to introduce you to Elizabeth Jeffett. She's a trailblazer in women professional sports, in tennis especially. She's also a serial entrepreneur and an author. She wrote Silent Partners and recently has a new book coming out. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad to be here, Sarah. Thanks yeah. for asking me. Absolutely. I want to ask you, first I want to talk a little bit about this book. For those who haven't read it yet, Silent Partners, it's an incredible book about a woman named Alex Sheridan. She works in the oil field. She's an entrepreneur. She's strong. She has a soft feminine side as well. I mean, she's just a well-rounded character that you just love but she's also very powerful and she is strong brilliant she's not just a pretty face so can you tell me a little bit about that character and creating that strength that you read and you get to know Alex well thank you Sarah um you know she came about and was characters are born sometimes and she was an inspiration because of the many women that I got to work with and that I grew up around. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned uh, history in tennis. So I was blessed to be, I'm one of the few second generation um, early tennis promoters, meaning the organizers, the people mm -hmm. that like own the tournaments and run the tournaments. My mother uh, was the first woman to ever raise the money and have a professional women's tennis tournament that was televised. And wow. it was in Dallas, Texas, and it became one of the largest uh, women's only tennis tournaments in the world. And so growing up with a person doing what she was doing, which was working out of the home, uh, multitasking like women so often do. Being a mother. Being a mom. And, you know, I'd wake up one day and, you know, Billie Jean King would be in the house or, wow. you know, one of the, the, the players would be coming in for the tournaments or, and, uh, you know, that uh, along with the other women that were so uh, unique to Texas, and I'll just mention a couple, you know, Abby Holiday, mm -hmm. Mary Kay Ash, you know, it just, these women, Mary Kay started Mary Kay Cosmetics as a single mom. Right. And they were all this sort of greatest generation and they were doing things that weren't easy to do. And that that was what was really fun is they didn't see uh, the difficulty of the task as being an impediment. So it didn't matter if everything was hard for women at that point. Yeah. So, you know, my mother was told nobody would ever pay to watch women play tennis. And now Never. look at it. <laughs> you know, millions. And so when we see, you know, Serena Williams getting a check for several million dollars, yeah. it's like, you go, girl. <laughs> so. You kind of talked a little bit about this before, kind of going to events with your mother and going to business meetings. And a lot of times you hear, um, you know, the, the son going into the family business. You went into the family business, right? Absolutely. I didn't really have a choice because the business was being run out of our home. And my <laughs> My mother was known to be one of the great delegators of all time so really at a an extremely early age it was she would just say we'd go do this or go help with that um, I did every single job you can do for a professional women's tennis tournament starting with being a ball girl and working my way up from there the most important part for any young person doesn't matter male female whatever you're starting is to not listen to people say that some things hard or it can't be mm -hmm. done I, I'm not saying that you don't do your due diligence but right it, it really everything is hard yeah it's not it's not easy to be in any a, a doctor it's not uh, right. easy to be a journalist it's anything worth doing is going to be probably very very challenging right. so listening to people say well, something's really hard is that was the greatest lesson my mother gave me uh, Nancy Jeffett was inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame in Newport Rhode Island wow. which is the International Tennis Hall of Fame yeah. for the sport of tennis and there are only like 268 people or something that are in that wow. and they are the greatest players of all time and the greatest contributor to the sport to the sport how did this all lead to mm. writing creating a book and now being an author you have another one coming out later this year tell us a little bit about that well this the book silent partners mm -hmm. uh, is set in denver and that initially it came from um, 
I fell in love with right. Colorado and Denver and my experience from, 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 but it was really from the experience of, it was one of the most challenging times in my life was mm-hmm. to, you know, go there and start a whole new business and, you know, with like four months lead time. Right. And, and for those, just for those who haven't read the book yet, that's kind of what the main character does. Yes. She goes to Denver and is creating this whole new company. Yeah. And, uh, she, that, that book will be re-released. It came out some years back, and it will be re-released next year, and along with a new book that's coming out. And we'll continue the um, escapades and adventures of Alex Sheridan. And um, <laughs> so, yeah, I just my love of Denver. It was also the time of when I lived there. It was the collapse of the savings and loan industry. Mm-hmm. So I'm very interested in politics and business, and so uh, that was one of the biggest things that had happened in that point in time so this character is facing some of the challenges that were around the and that you actually saw oh yeah very closely Mm -hmm. interacting with um banks are traditionally big sponsors in sport big Mm -hmm. financial institutions and so um that industry was uh really crumbling and then reconsolidating during the 80s and it was a you know it was a very challenging time so that my my love of business and then watching how um there were a lot of nefarious people and a lot of crooks during that time yeah. frame. And so, you know, I just had this idea of what would happen if somebody was involved in, you know, 10, 20 limited partnerships in business and what have, and, um, and a, a murder takes place. Yeah. And so I don't want to ruin the story say, for I, you, but <laughs> it was so good. I mean, I read it and I couldn't put it down. And um, you know, just sitting on the couch flipping through, my husband's like, "Are we gonna eat?" And I was like, "Oh, I, I completely forgot." <laughs> I'm just like so enthralled in this book. But it was, um, you know, there's there's people in the book the entire way. You can relate to kind of each one of them, and you can relate to situations. And the way you wrote about, I think it's not. It's not often that women are seen as business tycoons or being able to compartmentalize, being able to put feelings aside from business. Yeah. And and I think the way you wrote them was a very realistic way because it they do compartmentalize, but they also still have, you know, a feminine side to them, which I think is, is really cool how you captured that in their characters. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah. That was really, really important because the the partnership between the lead character, Alex Sheridan, and her her mentor partner, another um, high-powered businesswoman, I really wanted to show how women interact together on a day-to-day basis and how they can move in really from one conversation about you know drilling an oil well or doing a real estate deal and at the same time seconds later be you know talking about something in their personal life and yeah. that they're upset and they had a fight with their husband and you know women just are so um, capable because they can move from the emotional straight into um, you know doing an analytical business business yeah. thing. Maybe not straight in. Sometimes women get a little <laughs> bit wound around the post, but it's a strength. It's not a weakness. Mm-hmm. And um, what made you realize this? You know, what made you really want to capture this? You know, I, just, I had personal experiences working with women. I've had business partners. My first, okay, so I started uh, the Virginia Slims in Denver and then Wichita it was in that business. And then I added another layer and I started my own company back in the 80s called Brinker Jeffett and Associates. And we could, would um, be hired to help other people organize their events. Mm-hmm. So I've had, I had partners and the relationship between with a business partner is different than any other relationship you might spend 10 12 hours a day with your partners particularly in the event business it's very intense and you know you you're sharing goals and dreams and really really close i mean it it could be closer in some respects than people who are married and don't see their spouses and they you know come back home at the end of the day right so i really wanted to capture the kind of uh, closeness and intimacy that uh, people share. It could be two men who are partners. It could be a man and woman. But in this case, these two women, their goals and their dreams were big. And when when a crisis happens, it is uh, the story really unfolds of yeah. how the partners cope. I wrote this book because I w- wanted to stay home with my children. And I think that's a really important thing. So in addition, so then after building you know a second company, 
um, Brinker Jeffett and Associates, and I, I got married, and I had two children back to back. So then I was helping. So you're juggling the business, being a mother, kind of something that a lot of women are facing, Absolutely. trying to quote unquote have it all. Is that possible? <laughs> um, you know, I think one can have it all. Mm-hmm. I think um, Mary Kay kind of Ash summed it up. Um, you know that uh, in her belief system that her relationship with uh, her, her spiritual relationship with her God mm-hmm. and the family, God family, mm-hmm. and then your business. And there's an order that allows you to have it all, but, um, you know, and every, I personally um, decided I wanted to stay home with my children. So mm-hmm. I was able to help, continue to help my um, husband with his business at mm-hmm. the time, um, which was manufacturing, totally new to me. Right. <laughs> uh, but, I was able to help him from the marketing PR side, mm-hmm. and that's because I knew nothing about it, mm-hmm. and I could ask questions. So you were writing even before you were writing the book. <laughs> right, right. And so then I said, you know, I really want, I had this idea for the story, and I thought, I want to figure out how to write a book. And there you go. There you go. So, now it's history. <laughs> and you're writing another one. So tell everyone a little bit about your new book, um, where they're going to be able to find it. I know mm-hmm. you're releasing it later in 2020. Um, yes, you know. it's it's uh, it's in process and will be released in 2020. We don't have an exact pub date, but it does continue the story of Alex Sheridan. Mm-hmm. She's still now drilling oil wells and is a wildcatter in Colorado, but also in Texas and other parts of the country um, drilling all over. And so she's become sort of one of the billionaire frackers that we've all read about. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the only women wildcatters. Yeah. And so uh, she's faced with all sorts of amazing challenges uh, in that business and, and in her relationships, which is a big part yeah. of the story. So, and it's a mystery. It's a page turner. It is. It is. It's really good. And I do love, I got to say the, the fact that she's in the oil industry. I love that. I spent, my husband works in oil. I spent a lot of time in West Texas as an oil reporter. That was my beat. So I kind of, you know, it's funny the way you're explaining things and the way you're, they're talking shop and, and just the constantly how there's a lot of men in the industry. I, I completely understand that and I can it's awesome being able to relate to that and interesting and then like I said the whole just mystery and love aspect of it I, I'm, I'm really excited to read this next book so. oh well thank yeah. you well I, I want to ask you what advice do you have for women especially who are starting their own company going into business with a, a, a partner whether it be a man or a female or they are seeing the world from a hurdle basis they're saying I have all these hurdles what would you tell them oh they're just today they're just no hurdles compared to <laughs> what the hurdles were I mean I think women particularly in North America in the United States mm-hmm. women have just unfathomable opportunities and the the doors are open to them are are we, any of us going to run into people that don't want to be helpful? Are we going to run into what glass ceilings, what people call? Sure, but they've they've always been there. Obstacles have always been there. I just think it's about looking for opportunity, mm-hmm. and I think uh, also I believe strongly that uh, having a mentor, working with somebody, and learning a craft, learning from you know being involved in something. You don't become a rep- a seasoned reporter overnight you've got to work in midland in mm-hmm. the oil fields yes. first i have in my mom's handwriting she i found notes all over the house after she passed away of course i lived and breathed Sorry. her yeah. attitude but i found these notes and there would be steps of things to do and one of them was a dream is a is a goal with a deadline i love that a dream I is really a goal do. with a deadline so mm-hmm. i mean you can dream about something but if you don't put down how you're going to execute it and that was right. her next thing you know make make a list of how you're going to make it happen have some deadlines for that mm-hmm. and you know what if you do something and it doesn't work then you make another list and you say okay well that path didn't work we're going to try and go at it this how way how can i make it better yeah how can i make it better right how can i do it differently I how can that. i approach that differently but it never ever in a entered the discussion 
that something couldn't be done. I love that. If people want to find out more about you and about your book, um, what's your website? It's elizabethjeffett.com. Okay. And there's information there and you can read a little bit more. I think there's probably a summary of uh, a synopsis of my next book that'll be coming out. And it'll, of course, be available on all the different websites and Amazon. And there'll be lots of book signings here in Texas and other parts of the country. But Perfect. Anyway, I thank you yes, so much for absolutely. your time. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm, you know, I'm excited to get your message out. And I think it's a really important one um, that you do have the ability to change your own future. So I love that. Absolutely. You make it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Make sure to join us next week. If you'd like to nominate an inspiring woman, email me at sarahstrackhouse at gmail.com. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.